Hello everyone, this is Moses from Zatar Gardens. This is going to be a video that I don't like making because I always tell myself, go with your gut Moses, you shouldn't do this, something's not right. And uh, this is the second, I'm going to be talking about my pears, there's one here and one here. I bought them because they're vertically growing trees and it's going to provide afternoon shade for the grass in the summer. Uh, and if they produce pears, that's just a bonus. Instead of buying an expensive gazebo, like my neighbors, I could just put trees here and they'll provide shade in the summer. Um, well, they're the second year in the ground and I told myself, you don't need pears this year. You don't need pears. And they produced a lot of flowers, both of them, and a lot of baby pears, a lot. And I told myself, why am I doing this if the whole point of this was to make the trees grow up and have a nice big canopy to provide shade? In five years, let me enjoy some pears. Right now, let me enjoy some shade. Well, you know, obviously I didn't listen to myself, so I let it flower and I let it bloom. Excuse me, same thing. And I let it fruit. And not this variety. I forgot the varieties, which is which. But it's a Bartlett and a Du Jour. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, so they cross-pollinate. And this one is fine, but this one had a bout of fire blight. So if you guys know fire blight, you can see some right here. It's causing a problem. See all the black? And then oozing. That's oozing. And then I'm like, uh-oh. It happened before. If you're growing apples or pears, you expect some fire blight, no matter how clean or good you're spraying, or if you're not spraying, you know, cross your fingers kind of thing. It's, it may, or it's a high possibility of happening for your apples and your pears, your palm trees, P-O-M, not P-A-L-M. So I go, okay, so if you get that, you're typically supposed to cut back all the way or even cut back way below the branch. So I saw this and I go, great, I got to cut it down here to make sure that um, that disease doesn't keep going down to the roots. And then I kept going down. Uh-oh. 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 So that means I got to cut it back to where I started a year ago on the original cut down there. And all these have to be disposed of. So... There goes that great growth I was going to get. I'll show you the difference here because this one's healthy. This flowered later and I don't think it had any flower blight. So you can see how bright green it is. The, um, the spurs. Let's see another one. If you want to see up close one moment. See it just nice and nice bright lime green colors. So that's what they're supposed to look like. And unfortunately, that is not what this looks like. So this will have to be cut down. I hope I don't have to remove it, but it'll have to be cut down. And later on, if I do research and I find out which one I planted, which, because I think I did that in the original video, I'm going to watch it. Hopefully I stated which is which. I'm going to not graft that pair. I'm just going to buy another pear scion some other maybe a bosque or something else and I'll graft it into this next year so hopefully I just get regrowth that's all I want because you could even tell by the color of the leaves they're lime colored and I noticed that when they started flowering it was lime colored and they weren't like that last year because last year I took off the flowers right away because it's the first year in the ground you can see how darker these leaves are see how dark they are there's not one dark leaf on here it's all lime, like light, light green. Not, not sure if that's the way it's supposed to be, but anytime I've ever seen light green leaves, there's a problem, typically. You see right here, the leaves are just crinkling up. It's over. Gotta cut it down. Darn. All right, here's a quick update. Instead of making another video, just tag it along with this one. I can't hold on to a pear tree or any other plant that uh, could be a host of disease or uh, contract it very easily. It's just not um, 
Smart. Oh, there's a mosquito. It's that time of year, everyone. Great. Anyway, so I planted dun, 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 another avocado. B-type bacon. B bacon is known to be creamy, but there is no flavor. Uh, and you, some avocados do have flavor if you haven't tried one. Like a Mexicola tastes delicious. Bacon is watery and creamy at the same time and um, stringy. Uh, but there's one thing that the reason why I wanted the pears um, is because they grow upright and not branch out much to provide shade. I, I, I'm having, I, it's really dense here. I'll just do it from this angle. So you can see cherimoya, lime, two mangoes, moringa, pear, moringa, and then it would have been a pear. Used to be four moringas. Look how many trees in one spot. So I wanted trees that grow straight up and not branch out. And bacon is the avocado to do that. I know of someone that has a bacon <clears throat> um, here, probably 100 feet away from me, that was planted 25 years ago. It is over 25 feet tall, straight up. It branches out a little bit because he said it broke with the wind. So it started branching out a little bit, not a lot, but that is perfect. And one thing the bacon's, bacon's known for is large, beautiful leaves. Look at the, how, the seedling, look how big the leaves are already. Look how gorgeous they, well, you know, that's tattered, but look how nice and dark green, you know, compared to my Mexicola and Zutano. They don't look nothing like this. I mean, they'll be pretty in the sense, but I mean, look at that. Now, the other thing is, I don't want fruit from this tree for the next two, three years. And these flowers are stealing energy. So, bye-bye. I'm going to take off all the flowers off this little bacon avocado. And there's quite a bit. Every branch tip has them. If none of you have seen an avocado flower before, I'll show you up close right now. Nothing much to it, but it's still pretty. All right, everybody. Let's see how this goes. Um, and another cool spot about this is that it always gets afternoon shade in the summer. So these aren't going to really struggle. So the mangoes are perfect here. The lime is perfect because the lime doesn't take much frost where I am. Uh, Cherimoya doesn't take too much frost and doesn't like too much afternoon sun. And the moringas, of course, just could take anything, really, uh, except heavy frost, which we don't get here. And the pear would have been cool to have too. Oh well. Happy gardening, everyone.